Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with your co-host, the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice, and his wife, Jeannie. Michael and Jeannie share with you the wisdom of the ancient Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. They offer tools and support five days a week. They will support you in building a solid foundation within yourself to live in pure love. In Aramaic, Rachma. Michael is the author of So Why Is This Happening to Me Again? For more information on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. And now your co-host, The Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael and Jeannie Rice. To the brightness within you and the truth that is rooted within me. Good afternoon. This is Tim Hayes again here for Dr. Michael Rice and Jeannie Rice. And this is Mind Shifters Radio, where we're here to promote ending war on planet Earth. And we're inviting you to join us in that endeavor. We're inviting you to take a step, one little step, each day to remove anything, one little piece of something from your heart and mind, your body's energy system that's less than love. And how do we do that? We do that with a an ancient process of forgiveness from the ancient Aramaic and the tool that's available on Dr. Michael Rice's website for free at www.whyagain.com whyagain.com and I hear somebody else on the line is that Dr. Michael Rice? Yes, yes, yes sir, we're here how are you sir? doing well oh good Awesome. Another oh. opportunity, another day to learn and teach forgiveness. What a blessing. You, you seem like you're quite a ways away from the phone. Oh, okay. right there. Not coming through the phone. All right, so you're breaking up. I heard Jeannie a little bit stronger than you. Okay, maybe I'll trade that. Uh, Oh. I don't think it's Say hello, Jeannie. Well, Jeannie says uh, her phone's not on there yet, so probably it uh, is through my microphone. There is a, uh, there's, there's definitely a difficulty. <clears throat> okay, well, I'll tell you when Jeannie gets on and I'll try to. All right, you're, you're you're breaking up. So whoever is on and has pressed one, please say hello. Hello, this is Carrie in Colorado. Hi, Carrie. Hey. You know what? I'm calling today because I could really use help with a mind shifter. So I don't know if you want to help me work on that while they're trying to get through the a good connection. Okay, well, let's just assume that they can hear us. Okay. And that eventually uh, Dr. Rice will just start talking again and maybe he'll come in more clearly. That'd be great. So what's happening? Well, um, I am dealing with, I I actually have a wonderful job, J-O-B, that I'm, um, a ranch caretaker. I probably get paid more than a lot of people would for working about half time. And so a lot of people would call it a really great job. Um, I call it uh, something that is taking, helping me go the next step, but is also keeping me, um, in a way, it's helping me get to the next step of my own real work. But it's also, I feel like every minute I spend doing this job is taking away from what I'd really like to be doing in my heart and soul. And so I've been working on the mind shifter stuff, and I've been making this, um, but I'm not sure if I know how to formulate the mind shifter question or, you know, statement. All right, so what do you mean when you say you've been working on the mind shifter stuff? 
Well, I made up my own mind shifter. I, I watched the video. I watched the DVD on still point breathing and mind shifters for the second time. Um, I made up my own comment, which was, I love housekeeping, doing laundry, and shoveling manure. And I don't know if that's it, I don't know if that's what I think I heard Michael say awesome. I don't know if that's no, I, 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 I think I think he just right. laughed out loud. <laughs> he laughed, okay. <laughs> so um anyway, and then I made this whole list of things next to it that were things like resentment, bitterness, enslavement. And I've had this huge awakening that in my childhood one of the I grew up in a half Lebanese household and kind of old country ways of doing things and I I was taught that it's the woman's job to serve the home and I think what I was really praised for as a child was being a good housekeeper. <laughs> I that that has come to my mind since I've been doing this process. I've become very aware of that and thought I was never praised for becoming who I was capable of becoming. So I guess I'm just looking for for help on refining that mind shifter concept. Is that a good way to put it? And then I've done a bunch of worksheets on the responses I came up with. I actually talked to Julio last night and got a little coaching, and he said that I should work on it for an hour, and then I realized it said that on the video. And um, so I haven't done that yet. But um, any input is welcome. Well, the thought I, that comes to mind in listening to you is um, it's safe and healing for me and all my relationships for me to take the next step in my life and career choice. Since you've talked about how this this job is blocking you from taking the next step. That sounds really good. <laughs> Are you breathing? Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> yep. So say that one more time. It's safe and healing to take the next step. It's safe and healing for me in all of my relationships for me to take the next step in my career and my life path. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that definitely. Activate. That's really good. And then again, and then, as is recommended, you may need more than just one hour, but try to give yourself at least an hour at a time to sit and respond to the mind shifter and write it over and over again if nothing seems to be coming up. Think of okay. it in terms of of hitting a tuning fork and striking that tuning fork and holding it to your unconscious material over and over again. And each time you rewrite that positive statement, it adds energy to whatever is in resonance with that in your unconscious until eventually it can't stay behind the curtain anymore and it bursts through and comes out on the paper. That's a great. great way to do it. Michael, you were trying to say something. Try again. I was saying that it's such a great way to say it. I'm not coming too clearly to the uh, you're breaking up. I can't I can't hear a full thought. Okay. Uh, I'll stop. That sounds really good. I think he was affirming uh what you had said. All right, so Carrie, any other questions or thoughts about what it feels like to have that mind shifter in hand? Boy, I'll tell you, it just stirs my heart. I want to hang up. I just, it just makes me want to, <laughs> want to hang up the phone and go breathe for a while. <laughs> All right, if you feel you need to do that, please go ahead and do that. I was just going to say stay with it, and it's okay to cry as long as you're still breathing. Okay. But but even in Thank psychology you. school, they taught us that it's never any good if the patient stops breathing. Okay. <laughs> right. I got that. So thank you so much. This is really helpful. I just I just needed a little coaching, and I really appreciate it. I'm going to go write that thought down and just 
I'm sure I can already feel things just gushing forth. So All right, well, good. He, thanks. Glad to be of help. Glad you're on the team. And feel free to call back in and let us know how it's going. Okay, I'll do it. Thanks so much. Have a great day. You're welcome. Okay, bye. Michael, Jeannie, anybody there? Well, Jeannie, you're breaking up so badly that we can't... I can tell it's your voice, but that's about it. Hey, what's the chat room? Are you in the chat room? All right, so we have a caller. It's 954. Yes. You're on the air. Hello, my heart family. This is oh. Nene. Hello, Nene. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Kim. Hi, Nene. I, I believe that Michael and Jeannie can hear us, but they can't talk reliably, so they'll they'll comment in the chat room, and I'll rely I'll relay it to you. Yes, I can hear a lot of interference. <laughs> So, Michael and Jeannie, if you could mute your phones until we get a better connection. Okay. Um, do you want me to call back or? Oh, Nene, go right ahead. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, last night we had the Latin support group in Coral Springs, and it, this is a very consistent group. It's very nice. And I spoke about uh, relieving the stress and why you cancel your goal and the stress that it releases and how smart it is that we can actually manage our stress, that there is no external cause, but once you understand what the stress is, that it's an internal driver, internal mechanism that creates the behavior, and then it's easier for everybody to live their life and manage their, their energy. So it was very nice. That part, really, people got it. And then I asked about the last week when we we had uh, Michael visiting the group and what the group understood very much was that how the destructive energies affect our bodies and how they get stored in our system they're starting to realize the impact of uh, thinking and thought that comes from energies that are unlike love. So that that was pretty awesome to see that they are awakening and understanding. So they, these people are starting to do their worksheets, and we had a beautiful evening talking about, you know, the stress, canceling the goals. And then at the end, we did um, a worksheet. Everybody did their their parts and the understanding it's you know it has increased and their commitment to continuing to the group has also increased. So I'm very happy to share this with the group. Wonderful. Wonderful. It sounds like you're a marvelous teacher because to have people get advanced concepts like that so quickly must mean you're doing a great job of presenting it. Thank you. And I had a compliment too. They said that um, because I even as convey, you know, the knowledge and certain principles, when Michael was speaking, they were able to actually follow, understand, and reinforce what already they've already known through my um, lectures. So I, I was a nice compliment, and I accept it. <laughs> Wonderful, because you're certainly helping them build the, the brain cells to be able to understand these concepts that are so radically different from what most of us have been raised with. So congratulations and keep up the great work. Can I, can I add to that compliment, Dr. Tim? Yes, great. Wonderful, Michael. We can hear you beautifully. Hey, hey Nene. What, one of the things that yeah. Nene did before she ever even did teacher's training was we did a workshop in Miami and I did it in English and they did it in Spanish and it was awesome. These all group were awesome. I think somehow it's genetic for Nene to be doing this. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I, so she's I doing really great love work, it. It's, it's fabulous. Thank you very much. All right. Wonderful. 
Go ahead, Michael. Well, I have a spec if uh, Carrie's still on the line. Uh, I would offer a, a mind shift that would also go in a, a little different direction in terms of, you know, consciously creating. And that would be Carrie if you're still on the line. And if not, uh, I'll, I'll drop you an email. But uh, uh, to, uh, to do a mind shifter that moves in the direction of everything, every activity that I engage in supports me in doing my true purpose might take it also in another direction, along with the one that, uh, that you talked about earlier. Actually, the one you have uh, is, is a good one to do, the one you, you created yourself, uh, Carrie, and then the one Dr. Tim gave you. And this one will take it into another direction in your mind. And, you know, we can do several mind shifters around any given issue that, that take us through. You know, when you look at the fact that the, the, the picture world that we see doesn't exist in any way, shape, or form out there as we see it. It's all uh, a product of what's firing within our minds. And when you recognize that, this whole picture world we see is a hologram based in, who knows, 100,000, a million, a billion files firing within our minds. And so the more of those files that you access and delete hostility and fear-based con com uh, content, the more deeply you'll be able to uh, create consciously that which supports you. And so I think that mind shifter might be useful for you too. Okay, she's not on. She was um, going to go breathe because it was um, – she had a lot of emotion coming up, so – so you'll drop her an Thanks. email about that, and um, and it's good to have that in the archives because that's another wonderful thought and and an example of how many different angles we can take on any one issue to help us dig a little deeper. Exactly. You can you know when you start to recognize there's actually a an old time chiropractor back in I think the 30s that wrote a book entitled Anything Can Cause Anything, Anything Can Cure Anything. And so if our mind has a, our, our carbon-based memory system has a natural way that it processes something, uh, it will automatically process it that way. In the ancient teachings, that was called a money changer. That's why Yeshua went into the temple, which is our own structure, and moved out the money changer. So, so if I want to change a money changer, a mind shifter will show it to me, and then I can get to that, as well as a worksheet will show it to me. Each of the tools is designed to show it to me. And so uh, we'll, uh, we'll see that one opening the space, and you can take, like for instance, I know that uh, maybe... Another example, one that I've experienced personally, you know, the barking dog drives me crazy at night and I can't sleep. Well, I can change that into the barking dog deepens my rest patterns. And I'll take that frequency, that energy, and I'll make it something different than what it was a minute ago for me. And that's the whole idea of creating our lives consciously and that we can source and originate the way anything and everything affects us. Now, are there certain, uh, let's say, frequency exchanges that are beyond our control? Theoretically, no, that's not true. But, you know, there's, a, there's an old saying that says, tempt not your creator. I'm not going to walk up to a python and say, here, beat me so I can bite me so I can transmute that, uh, that venom. You know, there's a, is there a line? I, I don't think so. There's actually a, a great story that Ram Dass tells about uh, his guru. And, you know, Ram Dass was into LSD. And so Ram Dass, he said he took enough uh, uh, LSD to his guru and gave it to him that it would knock over an elephant. And the guru chowed down on the LSD and went, okay, now what? You know, you got anything else? <laughs> Had no impact on him whatsoever. So we just have a whole lot more power than the world has taught us that we have, and uh, all we need to do is get conscious of how we do it and conscious of what's in our unconscious and change it. And I love the way that you explained that, holding it up and, and such. That was a great explanation, Dr. Tim. Glad to have that one in the archives too. Good. Well, uh, Jeannie said we had uh, a 970 area code, and they hung up. But if they come back on, um, Jeannie will put you in the queue and just speak up so let us know you're there. 
And yeah. uh, I'm actually, I, in order for uh, for me to get the phone to work, the the signal we had come to count on the last couple of days disappeared. So we were on another signal that wasn't strong enough. So I'm now in a totally different location than Jeannie in order to be on the phone. Well, she's on the computer. The signal that her computer was able to tap into. That's where I was trying to speak to you from. Earlier. All right. So not. so let's have nine seven zero. You're on the air. Hey, it's just it's me, Carrie. I just wanted okay. to tell you guys I was I was I've been listening, so it's good. It's all helping expand my comprehension of what I'm working with here. So thank you. Awesome. And learning, you know, learning to create your own mind shifters, shifters is a fun skill. And uh, as you develop it, you can just go from file to file to file to file in your mind. That's another tool that you can use uh, when you're doing mind shifters, aside from doing worksheets on them. If you want to cover another issue and how something links in, then you create a mind shifter for the, the file that it links into and, and start going to depth in that file. And that will uncover others and go to depth in each file. And the deeper you go into each file, the deeper it comes out. And when you, do, when you create the mind shifter, you're basically setting it up around a positive of that issue, like a positive no. end result kind Not of? No, not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. The, the, the definition of a mind shifter, remember from the video, is that a mind shifter is a thought of an issue in your life around which you have negative thoughts, and it's the opportunity to surface, process, and release the negative thoughts. So it won't necessarily be something positive. It's the, the, the creation of the mind shifter is what will resonate and fire these brain cells. So we're not okay. looking to do the old affirmation kind of thing, although sometimes it will sound like an affirmation, not necessarily. Okay. All you're looking to do is to the right frequency to get the brain cells to fire that are in hiding. Okay, good. And I got that from watching the video. So really, I, and that's really helpful to know, too, that I can create one mind shifter. I, I can develop one mind shifter after another to access more and more information. It isn't like there's just one right mind shifter for a certain topic. Exactly. Well, you know, let's take that one about, <laughs> that was cute, the one about shoveling manure. And yes, I did laugh when you said it. But uh, let's say a, a mind shifter around that uh, would be perhaps it's safe in healing for me to heal my hatred or to feel my hatred when I'm forced to shovel manure. That would be a mind shifter. So if I have hate, you know, here I am being forced to do terrible things by people who just want to bully me, then, you know, that mind shifter will take me into that file. Yeah, man, here I am being bullied, taken advantage of again, and I get to surface all of that. Remember that the mind, the, the, the carbon-based memory system works by the law of resonance. And so the whole idea of the mind shifter is to get a proper resonant frequency that will show me what it is that's in hiding and that is now defining me. Because anything that I refuse to come into conscious relationship with defines me and runs my life. If you go back into the ancient teachings, the, the, uh, they said take care of the heart for out of it the issues in life. In our modern updated language, that word heart would be the unconscious. So there's some, take care, look into your unconscious dynamics or your dissociated dynamic for that's what defines your creative process. And what we're looking to do is to get that open. I, I personally believe that it's totally unnatural and unwarranted for a human being to have an unconscious mind that does not even belong there. That's why they say that the temple must be rent twenty. Each time you breathe and you touch into something deeper, you're opening that veil, that barrier between the subconscious and the unconscious and accessing deeper and deeper parts and looking to come into relationship with especially the most disastrous parts of what's in there. Because when you love a human being, come into conscious relationship with a part of your genetics or a part of your unconscious mind that holds disaster, you begin to transform the presence of that disaster within you. Well, it's in the unconscious, it defines the creative process. When you bring it forward to awareness, that's why in the ancient teachings they called the conscious mind the altar. That's where we can alter or change an unconscious dynamic. So does that make sense, Carrie? Uh, 
that makes sense. And as much work as I've done over the years, and I have done so many great progressive things and been involved in a lot of, I think, wonderful expressions of who I am, and yet I can still feel something like a ball and chain kind of holding me into thinking that I have to do, you know, in a way this job I have is a huge blessing, and yet what the job just doubled this summer because kids came home and there's all kinds of guests coming in. And I know that my soul, my universe just turned the heat up, you know, for me to say, hey, don't just sit there and say this is a great job because you're not doing your work that you really want to be doing 100% of the time. And it's like something is like a ball and chain to me to think that I have to do this in order to get the next step. And, so, um, so let me interrupt you there. Let me interrupt your thought okay. there, if you would. So okay. here's here's my input on that. You create the ball and chain out of the job. The job isn't a ball and chain. Whenever I say something out there creates something in here, I'm in denial and a dissociated state. The way I create dissociation is to say, this made me. So you're giving the power to the job. Right. No, let, no, let me and, say, and, what I was saying is I feel a ball and chain inside myself right. that believes right. I have to do this to go the next step. I don't think the job is a ball and chain. I actually think the job is a huge blessing. But I feel something inside myself that is terrified of believing that I can really succeed as who I am instead of as doing a job within society. So the mind shift I'd offer, the mind shifter I'd offer around that would be, it's safe and healing for me to look at and heal my ball and chain mentality. Okay. And that probably comes from generations and generations and generations of slavery. Right. And you know, most people think that uh, that slavery has been abolished in America. Slavery was never abolished in America. Go back and read the amendment that says it was the Sixteenth Amendment. It says nothing about abolishing slavery. It says involuntary servitude or involuntary slavery is abolished. You can volunteer as a slave any time you want. It's called job, just over broke. Yes. Yep. Yep. And it's okay. the internal ball. And so, and then, and and so, this shoveling manure is awesome because it puts you in touch with that part of you that creates the ball and chain, and now you can let it loose and uh, and take it to the next level. And so, do I look at this job as a blessing to get me the next step, or do I look at it and say, I mean, what I'm feeling is it there is this level of stuckness inside of me that's very old, very ancient, and and from my childhood, and from this lifetime, you know, that. So it sounds like the job is the perfect mind shifter. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you look at it, all of life is a mind shifter. Life abhors you creating any kind of disease, discomfort, or loss of purpose. Life it just abhors that. So it acts as a mind shifter. It's just a little slower than putting it down on a piece of paper and writing it on the spot and spend a couple of hours with it. Life brings us the experience that will show us the next layer of what it is that we need to heal. Life is so committed to us. Being alive and fully on purpose that it brings everything to us that would destroy us so that we get to look at the part of us that holds destructive mind energy and we get to change our minds about it. So the written mind shifter is like a way to short circuit that but you don't have to go through, pardon me, that whole experience. And you can just do it on the spot and change, change pardon me, those internal dynamics. If, if we had never defiled our temples, if we had ever defiled this device that was given to us to carry us through the Garden of Eden, if we'd never put something in it that never belonged, and the only thing I have to deliver would be aliveness, joy, and creativity, and experiences that would just enhance and carry us along in our purpose. 
The minute we defiled this temple, the minute we put something in it that didn't belong, it, it's so genius of the creator. The creator set it up so that it would hurt. And because it would hurt, we would tend to deny it. And then because we denied it, we would dissociate from it. We would add energy to it, and we would call out to the universe to send someone to bring that energy up in us. And then when it came up, we would do one of two things with it. We would talk about how power was out there, look what they did to me. Or we'd go, ooh, I've been through this 87 different times with 42 different people. This is mine. This is about me. I can change it now. Awesome. I just lost you. Nope, you're there. Okay, but it sounds like uh, uh, Carrie, somebody's talking. Carrie may not, we may not have Carrie. Okay. There is there is some um, breakup on, on your end, Michael, but it's completely understandable, so I haven't interrupted. That's good. Well, Carrie, if you're there, maybe you want to hang up and call back in again because I think your your voice just kind of turned into a bleep, 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 and we can't. I, I, I can tell somebody's trying to say something, but I can't hear any of it. So, Dr. Tim, how's that all fit for you? Do you have any thoughts about that? Well, it, it fits so well that it's just, as I sat here listening, it's hitting um, at different levels. Um, I, I think this this formulation of the way it just poured out from you is slightly different than other ways I've heard you say it. And so... Um, your life is working as a mind shifter for you? Yeah, yeah, and I love that, that there's a line from, from the uh, uh, Way of Mastery where it says, your life, your very life, is the most perfect ashram you could ever be in. You don't have to travel thousands of miles to some guru. You don't have to go live on a mountaintop. Everything that happens in your life shows you a reason to be grateful, to reconnect with what you've got, a reason to identify something in your system that's less than love that you need to breathe through and let go of. And I, so it's it's. Um, and I, I don't know whether it's from A Course in Miracles or something you said, but uh, one of the great things about the way the universe has constructed these things for us is that when we find something that we don't like and we don't want to deal with, we hide it in the only place in the universe we're guaranteed to come <laughs> right. into contact with it again, and that's in our subconscious mind. That's and what, exactly. you added, what you added this time around was the idea that every time I deny it and suppress it, I'm adding energy into it, and that means it's going to vibrate all the more strongly to resonate out to the the people around me to bring somebody in to show it to me. Exactly. You know, back 30 years ago when I studied with Marcel Vogel, I didn't realize how important this little piece of information that Marcel gave us uh, was going to be. Marcel was a 23-year senior scientist from IBM, an awesome awesome sweet blessing to the world this man was just amazing he had the kind of mind that when he was 11 years of age he invented and, and patented himself personally at 11 chemical light you know you go to a football game and you break up buy a light stick and you break it the two chemicals mix that was marcel vogel's invention at the age of 11 he worked for ibm for 23 years and when he left IBM, IBM gave him his whole laboratory to carry on spiritual research. If you have a computer on your desktop or your laptop or what have you, you have Marcel Vogel to thank. Because if he had not invented the magnetic coating on the plates of your hard drive, you wouldn't have a hard drive and you wouldn't have a computer. So that's Marcel's work. And what Marcel shared was that in his laboratory he had a camera, and this camera is called a Delaware camera. With that, he was able to take a picture of the high-energy waves that leave the mind when we think a thought. Literally everything we hold in us is continuously setting up an energetic field that is measurable and that will resonate or draw to us exactly what it is that we're holding. Now go back 2,000 years ago and you hear how they understood in physics and psychological language Aramaic when they said, ask and you receive. You just have to put the frequency in, and you set up a field, and the creator says, I have this guarantee for you. You command me, I will bring it to you. 
and here it is. And so at every moment of my life, when I could stop saying, this makes me angry, this makes me sad, she made me angry, that's all denial and dissociative language. And I can say, wow, that brings up. Now that it's up, it's a mind shifter. It gives me the chance to transform, to be responsible for, and to heal that part of my genetics and that part of my mind. If I'm conscious and aware enough to do it, it's awesome. Wonderful. Carrie, are you back with with us? Yeah. Carrie, are you back? Oh, she's back. Hey. Yeah. So how does that whole discussion fit for you, Carrie? And it's all perfect. It is all totally right on. I mean, every single thing that's been said, I totally align with and get, and I'll have to download this radio show and listen to it again because absolutely perfect. Great. And and we join with you in terms of our own process for ourselves and for you in your process in healing all of the old unconscious dynamics of slavery because yeah. it's been around humanity for so long and so deep and today the slaves rejoice and say thank you for it and they don't even know they're in prison. I think it was uh, maybe Thomas Jefferson who said the most difficult prison to break out of is the one you don't know you're in. And most people yeah. have no clue that they're in a prison. They think they've actually got freedom. And I was going to say, uh, Dr. Tim said, your life is the very perfect ashram. And there's a saying by the Buddha that I love, which says, that says, wherever I go, wherever I go, there I am, or wherever you go, there, there I you am. are. Yep. So, thank you. I'm going to hang up and keep listening, but this is wonderful. Thank you so much. I've got a lot of lot to work with. Delighted. We appreciate you. Look forward to seeing okay. you this summer. Yeah, many blessings. All right, blessings. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, Jeannie, do we have any other callers? Anything happening in the chat room? If so, if Jeannie has uh, c- c- clicked no, you in, says, if you want to uh, Michael, she says, uh, currently nobody with their hand up, and um, there's no activity in the chat room. Okay. Cool. Well, then, let's say a little bit about uh, the different things that are happening, uh, you know, all along the coast in uh, in uh, southeast uh, Florida. There are support groups. There's a Tuesday night group. There's a Wednesday night group. There's a Thursday night group. Every other Friday, there's a Friday night group. So there are lots of places to go and get support with this work. And we just invite you to uh, to jump onto the website, whyagain.com. Be part of the team that changed the world. Be willing to change all the parts of your mind hold any capacity for hostility or fear. And as you do it, remember me, support me in doing the same with mine. And as we move forward in this game of really truly embodying the ancient work of the man named Yeshua, let us join in creating a world where there isn't room for anything except human life. That the only thing that goes on is this awesome human presence in in these so-called human bodies that uh, that are walking around the earth unconscious and functioning out of hostility and fear and that along with that human life we have this awesome garden that we were given with every form of creature and and uh, every form of flora and fauna to enjoy to delight in uh, as I sit here i'm I'm sitting it's a little cloudy here in the Bahamas right now, but I'm looking at uh, coconut trees with this abundance of fruit that's just amazing you know back in World War one uh, in the South Pacific when we ran out of uh, fluid to uh, to put intravenously into people who were wounded, they would use the coconut water. It's so pure and uh, and uh, it's it's just awesome. It's there. I'm looking over and, and looking at this beautiful sunshine, this awesome water, uh, these orange, white, purple flowers that are just, I mean, they feed you when you're there to be fed. And uh, that we together transform this garden back to the state it was designed to be in where we show up as humans in every circumstance where there's hostility and fear we bring transformation by the presence of our human lives and for anybody who 
is not sure what I'm talking about when I say human life. Our definition is really simple. Hold a newborn child. You know exactly what human life is. And so we're here to support that in all the world. So, Jeannie, do we have anybody else there? Is David with us today by chance or anybody from Heartland? All right. So within the hour, the... uh Chapter 24 will be online in French. Yes, yes. And David is not with us at this time. So we thank you who uh, translated Chapter 24 and the uh, worksheet into, uh, pardon me, I think uh, Jose Maria, Maria Jose uh, translated the worksheet. And, uh, and now we have Chapter 24 with her help. Uh, she went in and uh, assisted Corinne. And uh, so it's it's going to be on the website. If you speak French, you'll be able to access that. Or if you have any friends or French, the explanation of the worksheet process is available. And uh, the worksheet itself. So we're, we're gaining language by language, bit by bit, little by little. And if anyone... Uh, speaks a language or has access to someone who speaks a language that we do not have on the site for anything that we're translating, the commitment, the worksheets, the the book, we would really appreciate your support. And you can go to the website and download the book, of course, in English, uh, German, Russian, Spanish, Farsi. And uh, we have someone working on Thai. We just put the the worksheet up uh, a couple of days ago, a young lady in Thailand. Amy, we thank you. Uh, Translated the worksheet into Thai, and she's working on the book. Uh, we we do have the book in, in Swedish. Unfortunately, the Swedish publisher uh, felt like they would lose money if they let us put it online free, so we weren't able to do that. But, hey, we're doing the best we can to take it to every mind, heart, and being on the planet. And, and by the way, we invite you to support us as we do that. Uh, this radio show and everything that we do is funded out of the what we do. And if you're garnering a benefit from it and you'd like to assist us in taking it further and further afield, then we invite you to go to our website, whyagain.com, and on the right-hand side, uh, there's a link that says donate and jump in and, and support us. That's uh, you know we do uh, as much of our work we possibly can totally completely free, but we haven't figured out how to do it for nothing yet. Uh, it uh, it takes money to get around the globe and to uh, to move these projects forward, and so we invite you to uh, support us in doing that. All so, right, well, Jeannie, are you, are, currently there's um, a caller six oh seven. You're on the air. Hey, everybody. How's it going? It's Richard and Ithaca. Hey, we're rocking, Richard. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine. I've been listening the last couple of days, really enjoying the shows. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to hear Dr. Tim's intro today, but I just wanted to compliment him on his intros as well. And, uh, again, uh, you know, the the process is the worksheet there to uh, to help you work through those issues and uh, I certainly found it valuable last week to work through some issues of my own so just want to keep plugging away there about uh, putting the pen to the paper so I'm looking forward to being awesome, there sir, this and I'm uh, planning today to jump online and order that uh, uh, trailer hitch uh, carrier so that uh, You'll be able to pick up our new distiller on your way to land uh, in a few weeks. So uh, that should be showing up. I assume I have the correct address for you in the last address you gave us when we were at Heartland. So I'll I'll get that shipped out today, and you should have it within a few days. Great. Looking forward to seeing it. Awesome. All right. Take Very care. Very cool. Well, any, other que- any questions for you, Richard, or anything else to share? Well, I certainly... Um well, I'm realizing that there's a, a lot of stuff that I, I'm, I'm realizing, I'm beginning to realize how I'm creating this stuff in my life and, uh, you know, realizing what's coming up for me and, and realizing, oh, this is me creating this. You know, it's a, like you said about uh, anger, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's something, it's a, an addiction that your body is used to and I... Finally, I'm starting to realize there's, you know, been an addiction that I've been used to, and I'm starting to realize 
what it is. And uh, it was interesting because the other day I had my cell phone camera. I don't know how this picture got on my cell phone. I mean, seriously, I don't. I, I didn't intentionally take it. I went to show a picture uh-huh. to somebody to take a picture, and it was a picture of a sidewalk with a crack in the sidewalk. And it was like, oh, yeah, this is my mind telling me I finally cracked through some concrete somewhere, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I love the uh, I love the uh, note that you included when you sent me the link to the YouTube uh, uh, video, and uh, Jeannie has put it on the website uh, as well. But there's a link to the YouTube video of uh, stress profile oh, yeah. of a killer, and yeah. I liked your comment on that, where you're questioning whether it's worth getting even the least bit angry after watching that. It's it's pretty dramatic, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's well. I mean, that's uh, even. But even 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 in the, your first page there, the ending uh, the, the of the web page, where you have the buy again uh, PDF that you can print out. At the very end, you have the thing about love and anger. You know, is, right. you know, is, is it even worth one ounce of anger of 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 poisoning your body with this stuff? You know. So I like your Absolutely. concept uh, of us being a, you know, this, this temple being a structure and what we, and again, it, I also go back to the uh, the story about the two wolves, you know, the Indian story about feeding the wolf in your heart, which one are you feeding? The wolf of anger right. and the wolf of peace, you know? And, yeah. uh, and that's a good, good image too because once you recognize what you're doing, uh, you can say, oh, stop this, I'm obviously feeding the wolf of anger instead of the wolf of peace. So uh, I exactly. find that image, image a very good image, too, once you recognize what you're doing. And, and again, it's the worksheets that help you uh, get to that point where you recognize, oh, this is me creating this in my system. And I, that's the value of the worksheet that I see is that it creates that uh, mindset to see it. And to feel it, right? And once you once you see it and feel it, then you have a choice. That's the beauty. Exactly. Yeah. So. Well, and and when you look at you know in the context of our earlier conversation, we're talking about the uh, the whole idea of the money changers in the temple, and and this is our temple, and we pretty much all of us with the, the genetics in this country, pretty much all of us inherited a money changer for anger that you know this makes me angry, that makes me angry, that makes me angry, that makes me angry, that every time that happens that makes me angry. We have a money changer. We have an automatic transmuter in us that when resonated, produces a drug that we like because it synthesizes and hides our pain. And once you start to recognize the power that that has, the uh, pardon me, I should say more correctly, the impact that has on your tissue structure. And if you haven't watched that video, uh, Stress, Profile of a Killer, I mean, it's so dramatic when you see there's one particular story in there. This guy uh, uh, is a researcher, a university professor who, who goes to uh, Africa and uh, studies baboons. And, and in the, the video, he tells how he doesn't like baboons because they're so vicious and nasty with each other. In essence, the human equivalent of they're just angry all the time. And there's certain ones that are just, they beat up and abuse the, the small uh uh, baboons, the females, and they're just nasty. And uh, he he shares how, after working with a couple of decades of these creatures, he has come to respect them, though he doesn't like them. And uh, and then he begins to witness a tragedy happen where there are uh, there's a dump, uh, and and someone dumps tainted meat, meat that's tainted with tuberculosis into this dump and this whole troop of baboons that he's been working with starts eating this meat and they start dying and and he starts out with how this is such a tragedy that this troop is being wiped out but then you know, how does this fit with our story here? Then what he observes over time is the only baboons that die from tuberculosis are the ones who are the angry, vicious ones Nurturing, caring, baboons that support each other are not touched by the tuberculosis. They live 
and he sees something that he's never seen in the baboon world. He sees a whole troop of baboons, because the only ones left are the the nurturing ones, who now become nurturers, or pardon me, who continue to nurture each other, and the violence and the viciousness that was pointed toward the uh, the weaker, toward the uh, the children of the the baboon community and the women, the females, uh, they're all dead. And there's a whole new dynamic in this baboon community. And, and he talks about how, you know, a male from another uh, community would end up being adopted or come into this tribe, and it would be as vicious as, you know, the, the males that, that had all died off. And he said it would take about six months for them to retrain that baboon. We don't beat up on the kids here. We don't beat up on the women. We're not vicious to each other. We are caring. We are nurturing. We are caretakers of each other, supporters of each other. And that's what we're looking to do is to create a community of people who are caretakers and nurturers and supporters of each other who truly, truly live a human life and function out of that awesome presence of love that we were all created to be. Yeah, and I I know that uh, I I think I said to you when I uh, at one point that makes takes on new meaning for uh, the meat show on Heritage Earth. <laughs> yes, they're going to be the only ones left. Literally, <laughs> that's why that that's the insight of that one is only those who function out of the active presence of love are going to survive the insanity that uh, that's coming down the pike. Exactly. And it's it, it, you know it, uh, I, I couldn't b- uh, believe what happened this weekend in Florida with that the, with the uh, with the person uh, you know eating another person naked in the middle of the street. I mean, this is what our society society has come to. It's amazing. That's it's pretty bizarre, cool. it's isn't crazy. It? It's bizarre. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah. Well, big wake up call. One of my mind shifters is to, uh, you know, is to live in, you know, in in, uh, in a space of uh, of uh, 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 love and uh, let me see if I can say it again. Hang on a second. I just created a new mind shift for myself. I'm just trying to find it quick for you. Oh. Um, Let's see what's. Uh... I'll tell you what. While you're looking, I'll just talk about a new book that I'm working on. It's one of the 8,000 projects that Jeannie and I are doing. But I'm I am working on a book entitled Mind Shifters: Keys to the Unconscious. And back when I had a private practice, I, I used to do a three-day week. I would start at seven o'clock in the morning, do my first client at seven in the morning, and then work with somebody every two hours through the day until I had a class in the evening. And each day I would assign each person I worked with a mind shifter. So I have a record of all of those. I have hundreds and hundreds. So the new book will have, uh, I don't even know, I don't know what the count is, but hundreds and hundreds of mind shifters for people to work with, and we'll be explaining the whole process. And uh, So so my, my new mind shifter is I live in a nurturing and loving environment and feel nurtured and loved by all sentient beings. Awesome. So, and you might want to add, might want to add to that, and I and I do the same. Great, right. great, right. yeah, cool, fabulous. So, all right, looking to be with being with you guys this summer and enjoy and, uh, and learning to teach this stuff because this is where I'm committing my life for the rest of my life to teach this stuff. So, awesome. Well, we look forward to seeing you in July, Richard. Thanks for the call. All right, Blessings. all right, take care. Bye. By the way, we will be starting. Richard's going to be uh, be coming to uh, to uh, be part of the Food Fund Forgiveness and Work Project that we'll be doing starting on July the 12th to the 21st. So anybody who wants to do that, it's kind of an economy program at Heartland. It's a way to to get a boost in the in doing the work and work with the community of people that are about doing their work. And it's kind of an economy program. It's 10 days. We'll be doing evening workshops. We'll do at least two mind shifter and still point breathing sessions in that 10 days. Uh, we'll be doing awesome food. Ari's got some new recipes, both cooked and raw. And so we'll be doing the uh, food program and um, and then doing work projects on the property uh, during the day, uh, getting ready for the intensive season. So that will happen uh, the 12th of July till the 21st. Then we'll have a day off, and we'll go right into a nine-day why is this happening to me again. And, uh, and then we'll... 
go from that when that nine days finish that uh, morning with uh, that evening we'll begin in uh, step into uh, nine day teacher training and that will be our the extent of our workshops at Heartland this summer so if anybody wants to come and play we'd be delighted to have you there and of course uh, there are paid workshops we do a work support uh, process if money's a challenge for you or if you want to come and do it you don't have the time to do the work support or how to work with you with some kind of a payment plan that makes it workable and so Come and play this summer. We'd love to see you. Dr. Tim, you started to say something? Um, yeah, probably several times, but it's okay. <laughs> One okay. thing I, uh, I, I uh, Jeannie was putting the number in the in the chat room again to remind us to tell people tomorrow if you want to call in. Uh, I'm sorry, on Monday, and uh, it's six four six two hundred four one six nine. And if you want to talk, press one. Let us know that you're there. Um, there's about five minutes left in the show, and I was going to suggest that we talk just a little bit about another topic that came up today um, when I was working with somebody, the idea sure. of the difference between um, positive affirmations and um, and the kind of work that that is produced by the worksheet process and what some people are worried about when they are introduced to this either the EFT tapping or the Michael Rice worksheets they come up with a a resistance to this because to their way of thinking this has us focusing all on the negatives and um, I know you've got several different good ways to talk about that what Jung said about the shadow and and you know, uh, premature positive thinking. So I thought that'd be a, a good thing to speak about because it just came up again today, and it's it comes great. up frequently when I work with people on this stuff. Yes, great idea. Well, you know, I think that uh, uh, the, when the ancients said the way is narrow, that the few are going to be that find the gate uh, and the balance between moving in the direction of the positive and what you want to create, and looking at the shadow side, looking at the uh, the darkness. Uh, and, of course, the idea of looking at the darkness is to bring the darkness to the light. As Carl Jung said, that we do not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, by positive affirmations, by going, oh, everything is wonderful, everything's wonderful, everything's wonderful, when everything's not wonderful, because we're creators. And if it's not so wonderful, we've created it that way. And if we're not willing to look into part of us and heal the part of us that's created it that way, then we're going to keep creating the unwonderful. And a lot of people don't realize how much damage they're doing in their process by wanting to be positive thinkers, by wanting to do nothing but affirm, 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 affirm. And my experience has been that people who affirm, 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 and never do any inner work around it end up becoming type A personalities that try to force things to stay wonderful instead of step into the natural state of the wonderful they're designed for. So... My offering is that when we were created, you know, hold a newborn child, you know what wonderful is. And that's our natural state. Everything else is unnatural, but it comes as part of the package. When we have a genetic structure, we carry within us uh, the creative process of all the generations, the conscious and the unconscious creative process. And so to try to force something to be wonderful when it's not means that the minute somebody lets go, the whole thing's going to crash. So I refer to that in the book, Why Is This Happening to Me Again, as premature positive thinking. And so what we suggest, as opposed to premature positive thinking, is appropriate, honest, and true thinking. If things aren't wonderful, I want to look at the part of me with which I've created this situation. And I want to bring it forward and expose it to the active presence of love. And when I bring it forward and expose it to the active presence of love, then I get to heal that part of my mind and the part of me that creates the, the problem, the challenge areas in my life. So there is certainly a balance. And, uh, you know, the worksheet is a balance. For somebody who would say the worksheet's all about looking at the negative, well, excuse me, go to step four. Step four, I choose to connect to this original created being that I am, my newborn self. And to strengthen that newbornness, that, that true human life that I am. 
And I'm willing to look at the parts of me that perhaps for a thousand generations my bloodline has hidden. And I'm willing to bring that forward to healing. And, and, and as we do, that, do, we create the best year yet of our eternal lives. We've got five seconds left. Have a lovely weekend and join us on Monday. Are you there?